So I've recently finished reading Justina Ireland's book, A Test of Courage. As we all know, the author and her work has been subject to plenty of controversy lately. From various tweets and interactions with some of the fans, it's pretty clear that some of us in the fandom are not happy with her and her politics. And many fans and YouTubers are bringing up the fact that they won't read or consume any of her stories because of SJW reasons. And many more have bashed on the book itself. So today, I'm going to give an honest and unbiased review of Justina Ireland's A Test of Courage. Is A Test of Courage, aside from her own personal politics, as bad as they say? And if you couldn't tell, there will be spoilers ahead, although I do try to keep it at a minimum. Nonetheless, you have been warned. But before the video gets rolling, consider subscribing to the channel for all things Star Wars. If you like Star Wars lore, news, and speculation, then this is the channel for you. So join the community and subscribe. A Test of Courage covers the story of a group of teenagers who are thrust into a perilous situation after the ship that they were on, known as the Steady Wing, is sabotaged by the Nile, and are subsequently stranded on the moon called Wevo. Now, this book is designed for younger readers, so if you have no patience for that sort of thing, obviously you're not going to enjoy the book as much. But, that being said, there are plenty of mature themes and struggles that are explored in this book, and I think for older audiences, there is much to learn and enjoy from the deep thematic statements, not to mention, it expands the lore side of things quite a bit given its short number of pages. There is one character in particular that reflects this element, who so happens to be my favorite character in the book. The name of this character is Padawan Imri Kantaros, and Imri isn't a very confident Jedi and often doubts himself about his place in the galaxy and his connection to the Force. And when he loses his mentor, Jedi Master Douglas Sunvale, the one Jedi who believed in him, Imri goes on a negative spiral that ultimately leads him to brush shoulders with the dark side of the Force but he does manage to break away from it and come out alright. What is really interesting about this character is the lessons that I think both older and younger audiences can learn from. That is, how do we deal with anger and sadness, and how should we move on from it? In times of anger and sadness, we often go down a dark path, and if we are unable to accept or move past it, it can lead to destructive tendencies. This is especially important for younger audiences as learning how to accept one's feelings and what to do about it instead of acting on impulse is a skill that we all have to learn at some point, which is why Imri is such a compelling character. Here is a character that from the very beginning is full of self-doubt and lacks the confidence that his master sees in him. And once his master is taken away from him, he has to struggle on how to stand on his own two feet. What really makes his story interesting moving forward is that he doesn't fully develop self-confidence by the end of the book. He is still a little unsure, as in real life, these things take time. But what he does learn is how to find closure for the death of his master and how to handle and deal with the anger and grief that is associated with it. As he later explains, a Jedi is supposed to understand that hate and anger are too destructive to be nursed for long. I forgot that, and it kind of led me to make some terrible decisions. Which is exactly what distinguishes the Jedi of the High Republic from the Jedi of the prequel era. Being a Jedi isn't about bottling up or clamping down on emotions. It's about understanding them and moving past them, not acting as if they aren't there as the Jedis in the prequel do. This leads me to the second element of the book that I really like, and that is the character Avon Staros, the daughter of an influential senator called Jira Staros. Avon is a socially different type of character. Possessing a deeply analytical mind, she attempts to rationalize everything and is seemingly unable to get in tune with her own deeper emotions, choosing to use math, science, and logic as a cover for her deeper insecurities and emotions. At times seemingly impulsive and brash, she hides a more sentimental side of her that is a product of her upbringing. She yearns for a greater human connection with those around her, but is seemingly unsure as to how to go about it. She has a bit of a strained relationship with her mother, which is made worse by an absent father. 
She feels as though she has been exiled from Coruscant as her presence around her mother is interfering with her mother's career. But deep down, she misses her family and often wonders what it would be like to have a better relationship with her mother. And these are incredibly complex emotions and relationships that the book bravely delves into. Eventually, throughout the book, she realizes, through the bonds that she develops with the rest of the party, her own inner emotions and how to deal and express them instead of hiding it away behind the veneer of science and logic. Honesty Weft is also another character that should be mentioned. As son of the ambassador of Dalna, certain expectations and decisions are placed upon him that he doesn't necessarily agree with. Like Imri, Honesty loses his father in the sabotage and comes to deeply regret his actions and how he treated his father during the last moments they had together, which is pretty heavy stuff for a book for younger audiences. Which is why I continue to maintain that there are plenty of elements here for older audiences to enjoy. Much like Imri, he has to learn how to deal with these very strong emotions of grief and anger. But now we come to what I think is the major flaw in this book, and that is the character of Vernestra Rowe. Vernestra is set up to be a talented Jedi Knight with a strong connection to the Force, who also happens to be the youngest Jedi Knight of her era. So immediately, she comes off as well established. But I think what the book should have delved into a bit more are the flaws of her character. Throughout the story, she seems to be in control of almost everything, relying on her Jedi teachings to guide her through adversity. However, unlike Imri or Avon, the reader doesn't get a clear sense of a deeper insecurity or inner conflict that can stand next to what was portrayed for the other characters. What I was hoping to see as I read the book was perhaps a certain awkwardness around her peers who would have been older than her or being unsure about her position as a Jedi Knight. The book does hint towards some hidden insecurities and she does hide certain things from the Jedi Order as I've covered in this video on the top right, but we don't get a full sense of where things are going or moving. It's pretty likely that we will see more in the future stories, but for now, the character is pretty static. But that is not to say that her character isn't full of potential. As to whether or not there are SJW elements or certain political narratives, I can safely say that there isn't, at least no certain narrative that are extremely controversial or hurtful. Accusations that her book is pushing a particular agenda are definitely unfounded, and overall, the book is a very unique and intriguing introduction to the High Republic era and Star Wars in general for younger audiences. If, like me, you are interested in all things Star Wars, whether they're made for you or not, then definitely check this book out. Of course, don't expect any ground-shaking events, but I think what audiences will definitely enjoy are the characters who very much spur the story on. So I am definitely immensely excited to see where these characters go in the future. That's all for today's video. If you like what you see, be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. I am the Lost Acolyte, and I have spoken.